Hello, I'm Jonathan Leonard, and this is the last of my brain science videos, one that deals with consciousness and dreams. To begin with, it's worth asking a question. Are we unconscious in sleep so that dreams only register once consciousness is being restored as we awaken? Or are we really conscious during sleep and in our dreams. Lots of evidence indicates we are conscious in our dreams. For one thing, dreams recollected by good dream recallers can be quite long. They can go on for pages and can be full of bizarre imaginings and intricate detail. To suppose that such dreams are the quick work of semi-conscious minds emerging from an unconscious state strains credibility. Also, nightmares wake us up often with sweats and a pounding heart, bodily responses that take time to develop. If we were conscious in our sleep, this makes sense, because then there would be plenty of time to develop these bodily responses. But how are we to explain these responses if the dream only happened as we awakened? Beyond that, it's hard to explain events like sleepwalking and sleep-talking without assuming that some degree of consciousness is present. And, of course, there is REM sleep behavior disorder, in which the paralytic block normally present during REM sleep is removed, allowing the victim to literally act out dreams. If the victim were not conscious at this point, how would he or she know what to do? Finally, we have the evidence that neural oscillations associated with consciousness are found to one degree or another in every phase of sleep. So it appears that consciousness is present to some degree during virtually all of sleep, especially in our dramatic dreams. And the reason we don't remember dreams is not for lack of consciousness, but for lack of memory. We simply don't remember what we dreamed. Considering all this together, it seems reasonable to conclude that dreams happen when they appear to happen during sleep and that we are conscious in our dreams. Indeed, we are probably more conscious than we think. Many of us remember only occasional dreams as we awaken. But people awakened from the midst of sleep by dream researchers frequently remember dreams. Those awakened from REM sleep recall dreams about 80% of the time while even those awakened from other sleep stages report dreaming or some mental activity, such as a persistent idea or imagined experience, about half the time. Overall, it looks as though nearly everyone has many nightly dreams. It also looks as though we're conscious in those dreams, but that most of them are forgotten because our ability to recall dreams, especially from anything but our last sleep stage, ranges from poor to nil, so the question becomes not whether we are conscious in our dreams, but why? Like some pitiable victim of Alzheimer's disease, why must we experience dreams every night only to forget just about everything that happened? By way of answering this question, it looks as though consciousness in sleep is important, but not for the fading dream memories it brings to us as we awaken. Rather, Consciousness during sleep seems to be important because it contributes to certain key brain activities that happen during sleep, much as waking consciousness contributes to certain brain activities that happen while we're awake. Now, we noted in our earlier videos on consciousness that consciousness seems to have a biological purpose, and that biological purpose is to serve as the brain's general manager. Also, consciousness is unitary, except in unusual cases of surgical intervention, we generally have only one sense of consciousness. So if some kind of general management were required to guide memory processing during sleep, the brain would need to employ consciousness, because consciousness is the brain's only general manager. We can find support for this idea if we look at the apparent role of consciousness in different sleep stages. For instance, consider slow-wave sleep, the so-called deep sleep stages 3 and 4. Memory processing in these stages tends to be highly repetitive. 
Billions of neurons are firing in mighty bursts that produce the slow waves seen on the EEG and a repetitive, synchronous pattern of activity. Little new information is being admitted. This memory processing seems dedicated to priming certain well-established neural pathways, perhaps to strengthen those pathways, perhaps to make them ready for action in other sleep stages. In any case, this synchronous bombardment of well-established neural pathways is not very adventurous, and it appears to require little in the way of general management. In accord with this very limited need for general management, we find a relatively low level of consciousness in slow-wave sleep. That is, we find that slow-wave sleep hosts a relatively low level of the coherent 35 to 45 hertz neural oscillations associated with consciousness. And we also find that the dreams or dreamlike events of slow-wave sleep are pretty basic. That is, they typically consist of short, simple thoughts or feelings, often reported in just a few words, and generally reported from only about half of all laboratory awakenings. Contrast this with the situation found in REM sleep. Here the repetitive burst discharge pattern is gone, and the slow waves have vanished. Now the brain is being bombarded by more or less random discharges coming up from the brain stem and entering into the visual cortex and the thalamus. The brain is engaged in a highly diverse sort of memory processing that looks on the EEG very much like the diverse activity found in the waking state. We know that brain activity in REM sleep features high levels of acetylcholine, a neuromodulator that excites the brain and creates LSD or delirium tremens type illusions in the waking state. And we also know that REM style memory processing improves the sleeper's ability to relate diverse, weakly associated words. So it looks as though lots of diverse information is being coordinated. This appears to be a situation much in need of general management. And indeed, in REM we find relatively high levels of the coherent 35 to 45 hertz neural oscillations associated with consciousness. And we also find that REM sleep hosts most of our bizarre and dramatic dreams. To sum up, in slow wave sleep where little general management is needed, consciousness and dreams are both at a low ebb. And in REM sleep, where general management is clearly needed, both consciousness and dreams are at their sleep time peak. It therefore seems reasonable to suppose that we are conscious, we dream, during parts of the memory processing of sleep, because parts of this memory processing, most notably in REM sleep, require general management, and because consciousness is the brain's only general manager. This brings me to the end of my series of videos on how the brain works. For those who wish to go further, I recommend the short list of books shown. The list includes my own book, Dream World, the prime source of these videos, and also others that provide useful views of the brain from different angles. Now I would like to say a few words in conclusion. To me, this is an exciting time. I recall many years ago in a high school biology class listening to an excellent talk by my teacher, Art King, on how the eye works, how the lens focuses light upon the retina, how the retina sends messages via the optic nerve to the brain. So I raised my hand and I asked, what happens then? What happens when the messages reach the brain? Well, the year was 1957, and my teacher answered truthfully, We really don't know much about that, but times have changed. We now know a lot about that. We know a lot about how the brain handles sensory information, and we have begun to pry the lid off of all sorts of deeper brain mysteries, including things like sleep, memory, emotions, consciousness, and dreams. 
So I hope you have enjoyed my videos, and I hope that you continue to seek out brain science revelations, recognizing that these videos are intended not as an end, but as an introduction to an exciting human adventure in self-discovery. Thank you for your attention.